two, one, and we are live. Well, welcome everybody to yet another edition of the Bench Doctor Office Hours. Uh, this week, Scott's going to show us how to get really, really mad at a gun um, and uh, take apart and put back together the much maligned uh, Ruger Mark series. He's got one there that's a cheat because I think he's got himself a Mark IV, uh, but I think the top one is a Mark II. So uh, if you have questions during the, <laughs> if you have questions during the, uh, during the presentation, drop them in the chat. One of our esteemed co-hosts will pick it up. Uh, myself, Ed Gardner. Uh, we got Lonnie Weissman. Uh, we got Eric Myers and Michael Ross. And uh, one of us will pick up the question and find a convenient time to ask it. Uh, so pepper, the, pepper it with questions as you will. Either that or sit back and enjoy the show as uh, Scott frequently can't get stuff back together quite as quickly as you take it apart, especially <laughs> when he's on camera. So without further ado, I turn it over to Scott. Tell us all about the Ruger Mark right. series. Yes, yeah, so tonight I figured I would show you uh, how, you know, the, the Mark series of pistols prior to the Mark IV is much maligned because they are a pain to get back together. Uh, but they're, they're really good pistols. And once you have mastered the technique of putting them back together, they're really not that difficult, but the learning curve is incredibly steep on them. This is an old Mark II series. Um, the Mark I, II, and three are pretty similar. The, um, there's a few subtle differences. You know, the Mark II is the first uh, time they had the um, uh, bolt lock here, they, or, you know, the, the bolt release. They didn't have that uh, on the previous Mark I series. And then the Mark III, they've made a couple more changes to it, but they're essentially all the same gun. And then I have a Mark IV. This is the latest iteration of that gun. Uh, it still works the same. I think the bolts are interchangeable to the previous versions, but the frame is different. And then this is a 2245. So it, it has the uh, grip angle of a uh, 1911. So if you'll notice, this has the traditional Ruger um, Mark series guns had this really steep uh, uh, grip angle, kind of like a, a Nambu pistol. They were they were designed after the Japanese Nambu pistol uh, or the old German Lugers, and they have that really steep grip angle. Um, and they came out with the 2245 because a lot of people don't like that grip angle a lot. It's a little bit unnatural for them. So I figured I'd get one of example of each to kind of show you, and you could see side by side you know, the, the difference between how steep the rake is on this one versus this one. Um, but we'll start with the, the new easy one and I'll show you real quick how that's, this thing goes, comes apart and, and goes back together and then we'll bite off a, a big chunk of uh, Mark series paint here. So once again, I don't have any 22 ammo on my bench. Uh, these have all been safety checked. You'll notice there's chamber flags in them. There's no, uh, no live ammo. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my uh, safety, my chamber flag, drop the bolt down. And then on this gun, it needs to be in, the safety needs to be on. And uh, from there, there's a little button right here on the back of the gun. Uh, you can see it right here under the bolt. Uh, let's see, right there. So all you do is press that and it comes right apart. And that's, you know, then you can get down into the trigger and uh, get to some of these parts to clean it. The bolt just slides right out. And this bolt looks exactly like the Mark II bolt. There's not a lot of difference there. So you can recoil spring. Get it right out. We just... This one's tight because it's pretty new. So that comes out and then you can, even further, you could take out your firing pin by removing that little pin. If you remove the pin, make sure you put it back in because it's retaining the firing pin. And if you put it back together, it will go back together without that pin. But what it will do is the first time you fire it, it will slam that firing pin into the breech face and ruin the gun. 
Uh, Ruger warns you about that in the, in the manual. They have a pretty dire warning about making sure that pin's in place. But, you know, here's your extractor. And you just, uh, you know, cleaning these, I just take a uh, nylon brush and I scrub this, this clean and I take a pick and I clean these little grooves right here. I clean these channels where the firing pin floats. Um, and I clean up under here and get all this crud out of here because crud tends to kind of build up. And these 22s are pretty dirty guns. A lot of carbon builds up in them. Uh, and then on the bolts down in here, uh, right along in this bolt face, they, I, you just accumulate what looks like concrete right up in here, um, this, this edge. And then this way you can also now get to the barrel through the, the chamber side, which is the preferred way to clean uh, any gun, you know, if you can get to it from the chamber side. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a very simple, easy gun to field strip. Usually there's no, no real reason to take one down beyond this. This is the, the Mark IV series now comes drilled and tapped for uh, mounts, you know, plates, red dots. Uh, this is the uh, tactical version. So it, um, I have another barrel for it. That's the tactical version. It has a rail on top and a rail down here. This is a uh, target barrel that I swap out. And uh, on these Mark series of pistols, your serial number is right here. So this is the gun, uh, the frame. The, you know, you can, uh, you don't have to fill out a, a 4473 on the frame, but if you buy a barrel, the, the receiver in the barrel is the gun. So I have a few of these that are, uh, that I swap out for different configurations and, it, and on the Mark IV, it's so simple to do. To put it back together, you just take this pin right here and it mates up to this groove right here. Just put that in there like that. Let me put the bolt back in. That'll be helpful. It'll work a little better that way. That screw spring back in place. Um, but you know, I, what I usually do with these, I recommend um, when you get one is go out to Tandem Cross uh, and get yourself a um, an extractor, Tandem Cross extractor and firing pin. They're made a little harder and uh, the, the extractors on them tend to kind of wear down and get dull and you have extraction issues. It's not uncommon with these. And so that's the easy, oh, come on. <laughs> Hold on just one second. It wouldn't be a day without this. Be just one second here. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, you made it 10 minutes. I did. So as, uh, as people may, may understand, sometimes there are technical difficulties. Oh, we're yeah. back. I was going right. to say, I don't want to have to dance again. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you, if you get one of these, it's, it's a really cheap upgrade. Uh, you can replace this little extractor and the firing pin. They're, the, they're harder, you know, they're made of a harder alloy um, from Tandem Cross. And there's a couple other people that make them. Uh, this is just a little detent and spring and it's pretty easy to take apart and replace those. And you'll see how sharp that edge is. You really want it to grab that case and pull it out. Um, this is usually the, source of frustration on these pistols when they, uh, they've been used a while. This little tip, I don't know if this is gonna show up, but there's a little sharp edge right there and that wears down and it gets rounded off and you start getting extraction issues. So it's, it's a pretty easy fix to, to fix that. So anyway, I put my bolt back in, line that up. There we go. That's it for a Mark IV. Super simple to take apart field strip. All right, so we're done, right? Yep, yep. Now Excellent. we're going to oh. the, <laughs> the legendary uh, horror show that is uh, the old Mark series pistols. So this is the old original uh, Mark. This is a Mark II. You could tell a Mark I because it will have a slightly different uh, magazine base and they only hold nine rounds. Can you angle the camera down towards the grip? 
or towards the uh, magazine well is it yeah. uh, without disconnecting it because i think when you hooked it back there we go that's Woo-hoo. perfect all right so you can also tell the mark twos because they have this sort of uh, relief cut on both sides of the bolt right here to make pulling the bolt back easier when this is uh, on the old mark ones is there's not much to grab to, to pull the bolt back so they put this little relief cut in there and then a mark one of course wouldn't have the bolt uh, the slide release or the bolt release on it um, but anyway let's get to the business end of this thing go ahead and pull my chamber flag out get the bolt lock back all right so now this is a, a game of jenga or somebody aptly described a rubik's cube to get this apart there's a little lever right down in here and you can use a, a paper clip or a hook i just use this little screwdriver let me drop the bolt and then one thing about these older pistols too is it will fire without the magazine and you have to pull the trigger to get it apart so due diligence make sure that it's empty um, because that's not usually a, a feature in a lot of guns so i'm going to pull my trigger and uh, now we're going to pop this little lever up hey scott just one more time before you before you uh-huh. take it apart show 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 how to be sure it's clear because i think that's okay so, that's so incredibly important yeah. so i lock my bolt back and right down in here i'm looking at the chamber and you'll see that there is no rotate the rotate it left so we can see that now yep i can see the, oh no left yeah yeah i was gonna say you're, there you go perfect yeah so right here that chamber is open i can take this pick and run it right down there i don't want to stick steel things down yeah. my barrel but right there and, and then magazine, also mag well. the magazine yeah. well is empty um you know there's nothing in there so yeah you want to be real careful with a gun that you have to pull the trigger to disassemble so I'm going to go ahead and drop my slide, pull my trigger. So now I'm going to pull this lever. It may, it may be hard to see, but it'll become more clear as I pull it up. So there's that lever right there. Show it. In. And I, this thing, I, it, it's designed to set flush when it's locked in place. This is the mainspring. And when it's under spring pressure, it sets flush, but it just looks like a dagger. And I have uh, poked myself in the palm of the hand with this thing. So be careful. So you pull it, you rotate it out of the way, and then you just pull it straight back like that. Okay. And you can clean that and oil it. I put a little bit of, just a little drop of oil on these, these places where it pivots. And then I just kind of rub a little bit of really light sheen of grease on it to keep it from rusting. That's all I do with that. You slide your bolt out. This one you have to tap a little bit to get the trigger out of the way. So as you can see, the bolt is very similar, or it's identical to the uh, Mark III. I mean the Mark IV. You know, whenever these... I have one question about the loaded chamber indicator, which uh, I don't think is on the Mark IIs at all, but no, it's on not. The, on it's the on the Mark, Mark on the Mark IV. You wanted to, I, I completely missed the question. Somebody wanted to know if it was on the Mark IV or not. Uh, I think it's an option and I don't. Yeah, believe... I think it depends on whether it's a mass compliant or a California compliant. Yeah, I and I, a lot, yeah, I, I think it is. I think it started with the Mark III. I think they had a loaded chamber indicator on them depending on where you bought it. Um, but yeah, it said, uh, now the, the Mark, four you don't have to pull the trigger in fact you put the gun on safe when you disassemble it i think it took them 60 years to figure out but uh they did uh remedy that with the mark four so you put it on safe and it won't fire with the magazine out of it so it's a it's a different animal in that regard but up until uh then you were i, I don't know about the mark three i don't know if the mark three is the same way i have never taken one apart but mark i know that the, the same way the mark three is just like the mark two as far as that's okay. concerned and my mark three before i sold it had a loaded chamber indicator and i believe it was optional okay yeah and but the takedown and field strip of them is the same mark one mark two mark three the only deviation is the mark four so anyway you can see your bolt and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the firing pin out just to show you how to do it, should you need to replace one. I'm gonna remove that spring. This will only take a second. Get that out of there. 
famous last words. Yeah. So you just you just push this little pin out like that. And there's your firing pin. So you can see that's got a little bit of oil on it, but that's the part that's striking the back of the case. So if you don't put that pin back in, this whole thing just rams right into the breech face and bad things happen. And Ruger won't warranty you at that, at that point because they've warned you in the manual. If you look down, I don't know if this is gonna show up. There's a little spring in there and a little detent. That, um, yeah, we can see it. Yeah. I can see so, the spring. I don't know if I can see the... Uh... Yeah, so you just pull that little spring out. So, you know, this is if you really wanted to deep clean that bolt, you pull that out of there and clean this channel. Um, and then we can depress this detent and pull out the extractor if we wanted to, if we wanted to replace that. That's the first thing I do with these, whether they're new or used, is I just go out to Tandem Cross or Full Quartz and then buy those and replace them. So when you put this little screw back in, you want, there's a little ledge, it, it sort of kicks down. You wanna put that so it's facing down and into this little groove right up in here. And you just drop that back in place. Watch my big sausage fingers there like that. And then you take your firing pin, put it back in that groove. And then you just replace this pin. Get this in there. Just as simple as that, right guys? Let me get it aligned here. Scott, if you didn't struggle, none of us would watch this. I know, I know. It's, it, I don't blame you. I want to see other people suffer too. So a little pin. Let me just align it with the punch. There we go. It's a trick I learned with assembling ARs. See which way that needs to go. Get a bigger hammer, Scott. Uh, yes, I should. <laughs> and this to be not... clear, we don't usually need to do this. <laughs> no, I uh, I just do it because, uh, like I said, I replace these parts as soon as I get these things because it uh, this really isn't <laughs> isn't that big a deal. You just got to get that thing aligned. There it goes. So now it's back together. All right. Okay. So now we want to take the next part of this procedure is we've got to take the barrel off the receiver if we want to get down into the guts of this gun. Um, and the way to do that is a little bit unnerving. If the gun has been used a lot and disassembled a lot, you can just grip it and push backward on the barrel holding the grip tight. This one is still pretty snug. So I take a hammer. With, notice this is a... Uh, soft mallet. You use a rubber mallet or a plastic, um, or you could put a piece of wood on this and smack it, but do not beat on the crown of your, your handgun with a steel hammer. It's just an all around bad idea. If that's all you've got, put a block of wood on here and tap it. So you just give it a couple of whacks. Oh wait, I'm sorry. So, that's, there we go. So you, you just go. smack. Smack yes, it forward. Boys and girls, not only do you have to pull the trigger, but you have to hit it with a hammer. Yes, you, you. so what's happening is this, um, this is your little locking lug right here. And that's locking in to this space on the barrel. There's a little edge right in there and that's what locks it together. So there's your barrel. Once again, now you can clean it from the bore end, you know, the breech end this way. You know, and it, it makes it a lot handier. Plus, you really want to pay attention to this this face of the breach. This is where I find the most crud building up. And, um, you know, it's I, a little pick goes a long way to dig that stuff out of there. 
and it makes it easier also to take it to get a patch down through here uh, to clean out this this channel. Um, and also, you know, you're going to want to get in here. I use a non-chlorinated brake cleaner. You got to be careful on a on a polymer gun. You want to test it to make sure that stuff won't hurt the plastic. I haven't had it hurt anything yet, but fair warning, you're going to want to do due diligence and make sure that it's not going to hurt anything on your gun. But I spray down in there, and it and it loosens up all that crud and washes it out of there. And uh, here's your trigger. Um, you can get down in that mag well and you can run some patches down in there because that gets cruddy. On the old Mark series, this is your mag release down here. It's, it's not a thumb release. It's down here on the bottom, the kind of the European style. So I like to put a little drop of oil kind of on that pin and spring down there because that's, that's exposed more to the elements. Uh, you know, because you, it's right there where your mag goes in and out. So it can get a little bit, uh, it can get some moisture on it and a little bit of oil will, will prevent that from getting rusted. So uh, you can also take the grips off and get into the mag well through the grips. And I'll take one off and show you. Yeah, that mag release is different on the Mark III. They actually went to the standard yeah. type of mag release. They moved it up to the civilized part. So there's the, the grip panel taken off. You can get in here and clean this all out, um, scrub it down. So now let's the fun begin. Now we're gonna, we've cleaned it, we've inspected it, we have uh, lubricated it, and now we're gonna put it together. The first time you do this, uh, you will invent uh, words of frustration. Um, but after a while, after you've done it a bunch of times, you figure it out, the secret to it. And I'll explain the secret uh, and show you. So I'm going to put that back in place. I'm going to put my barrel back on. So get that lug in there. So now I'm going to tap my barrel this way. And you, you'll know you're far enough because this barrel overhangs the back of the frame just a little bit, maybe a, an eighth of an inch. Right there, you see that? I don't know if, if it's showing up, but there's a little bit of an overhang right there. So that's how you know it's in, in the right place. Give it a smack for good measure, okay. So now to reassemble this thing, you put your bolt back in and of course your, your spring goes up and so looking down here, if I have the trigger in the wrong place, let me get that trigger. Yeah, we can't see anything. I'm going to try to get the trigger yeah. there. See now how that trigger is, uh, I don't know if, let me see if I can get this, show you. Almost, uh, almost up, left. Yeah, see the trigger. There we go, yes. The trigger is up, a that hammer. A little further left, you just, you moved it out of frame again. Oh, now it's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> So that there is. right here, I don't know if you're seeing that, but right yeah, in there, yeah, yeah. there you go. Your, your hammer is up. So your bolt will not go in. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get that out of your way. So you can pull the trigger and just kind of push it down. Let's see here. Get that out of my way. Let me get that hammer spur. Okay, so I, what I did is I pulled the trigger and then pushed down on it and it got it out of my way. So once it's out of your way, you're gonna slide your bolt back in. Let me get that. Spring's a little bit wonky in there. Let me get it straight. So I don't damage anything. Okay. So now this is the, the, the secret uh, to these Mark pistols is there's a little hammer spur and I don't know if it's coming through or not, but yeah, let me see if I can get an angle on this. See where my pick is. There is yeah, a little an external light. We might be able to see it. I can, okay. all, I can kind of see it. Let me put on a headlamp and see if I can shine it down in there and give you an idea. Cause this is really the critical part of understanding what these things and getting them together. something up okay so there's a little hammer spur I don't know if this is coming through let's see here 
right here. Does that show? Almost, not quite. Right there, there you go. That little piece that I'm moving back and forth. Yep, that's it. That, that's the hammer spur. Okay, that's critical. That The placement of that dictates how this gun goes back together. So what you're doing as you're, as you're uh, putting the gun back together, you're, you're constantly, each step, you're moving that to a different position. So as you can see up here, my hammer is down. So now what I need to do is I need to move that hammer out of my way. So I put the pistol in this orientation and I pull the trigger and see it dropped. So that, that, that hammer dropped out of my way, which is great. That's what I need. Now I take my mainspring housing and this, you put it back in and this little knob protrudes right there. So I'll show you that. So you slide this in and then this, there's a little hook here that hooks into a little rail right in here, a little cross member. So this slides in. So make sure I got that in the right way. Okay. Let me pull it back out and make sure I got that spur out of the way. Oh, that was out of frame. Yeah. All right, I might have to tap that a little. There, see how that's protruding now? That little bubble on top? That tells you that it's all the way seated. Okay, so now what I need to do is I pull my, I turn the gun upside down like this because I need to drop that hammer spur out of my way. I pull the trigger. Oops, see, I got it wrong. See, that won't pull back. <laughs> that hammer spurs in my way. I knew I'd do that, but that's all right because that shows you what you know how you what uh, what wrong is. So pull it out, start over, pull my trigger. You can. I know this is really a lot to ask, but if you can get more of that in frame, yeah, so that everybody can. Because all we can hear is the frustration. We can't see it. And that's yeah. The, that's well, what, I don't that's, know. That's how... what people are. That's what people are paying for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I know. That's right here. That's good light. That's the That's hammer. Perfect right light. If you, yeah, yeah, you almost got that perfect. Okay, let me get. I'm, I know I'm purposely out of frame here because I want to show this is what it would look like. So you need to drop that out of your way. I'm going to see if I can get it to happen on the camera. There, see it drop. Yeah, we could. Yeah, the light was just a little off, but I saw it flash. So. Yeah, you could hear it. It it makes a little click sound. So now this needs to go back in. There, see it's seated. Okay, now you see that hammer spur. Uh, this is going to be tough. I have a, a real quick question before you uh, hit it with the hammer again. Uh -huh. um, uh, James is asked, he has to put the magazine in and pull the trigger uh, and pull it back out while reassembling. Is that unique to the 2245? I recall that being a problem with my Mark III. I don't seem to see it's see, see I don't seem to see it's a problem with the Mark II. No, but the Mark IV, you have to put the magazine in and uh, operate the slide. It it won't fire without the magazine. Yeah, the, the there's a magazine disconnect on the Mark III, on yeah. some of the Mark Threes as well. And that's a popular thing mod is people get rid of that magazine disconnect uh, so they can kind of test fire the gun without putting a magazine in it. Yeah, so he's got a Mark III, so that's that's exactly what yeah. it is. There's so a magazine see, disconnected. You need to do it with the mag in. Sorry, yeah. go on. So you see right here, I don't know, this little chrome spur. Yeah, it's there. That, you can see it. Yeah, that is aligned. There's a notch in the bottom of this. And so you're wanting to get that aligned to that notch. And now in this orientation, you pull the trigger. There. Hopefully this. There. That's it. All back all together. That happen, all that happened off camera, so we didn't see it. I'm just kidding. All right, I'll do it again. <laughs> it, it's really hard to. I just wanted to show Lonnie that I could do it. He <laughs> didn't believe. He didn't believe me. I, I believed you. You've been doing it enough times, though. Try doing it when you're, you know, if you're somebody you, who's never done oh, this. Oh, I, I get it. The first time you do this is one of the most maddening things. I'm going to get that hammer. So I'm going to drop my hammer out of my way. 
let's see. Is that showing up? Yep, yeah, yeah. Hold it. that light right there. Okay. And give yourself a gut shot because that, we know where it's pointed. Yeah. So let's get. Why is it not? It's supposed to be dropping out of my way here. There we go. This is an older <laughs> gun, so if you yeah. you'll notice it's it's now down in the firing position. It was back in the cock position. Now it's down in the firing position. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it back. Push that through, it's protruding. Okay, now I'm turning the gun over. Oh, and I'm oh looking whatever at that. that view was, you could see things. Ah, okay. you missed it. Yeah. yeah, that might work. Let me get that spur I down. Think Scott's gonna join Cirque du Soleil because he's gotta do all these contortions on screen yeah. for on our command. Well, the problem is I can't see what you're seeing or not I know. seeing. <laughs> so. Well, that, that was a really nice, you showed moving that spur down. Yeah, yeah, see that see that, sp yeah. that spur right there aligns to a little channel. Uh, if you move that out of the way, when, if you, in fact, I'll just show you what it is. We can do this again. Just show it. There, see this little channel in the in the bolt right here. Yep. That's what that spur is dropping into. So that's what we want to align the spur with. Just to give it some uh, context here. So we'll drop our bolt back out of the way. Put our mainspring back in. Get it protruding. All right, now. So I got it to drop. It's in line with that channel. And now I pull the trigger and I rotate this forward. And that puts the spring under tension. Nice job, Scott. So there you go. That's how. That's that's as simple as you can do it. Uh, it will take you some practice, but understanding the orientation of that hammer spur um, is the secret to doing this. And the instructions that come with the book and some of the YouTube videos don't explain to you why you're doing what you're doing. They just say, "Hold it this way." Now hold it this way. Now pull the trigger. And, but you're not getting the context of why you're doing it. So what you're doing each time is uh, manipulating where you want the hammer and the hammer spur. And it won't go back together unless that hammer spur is aligned to that groove and uh, the, the trigger's out of your way. And it will absolutely, the first time, drive you nuts because you'll see some guy on YouTube do it in 30 seconds and you'll be like, I know it can be done, but it just will not go back together. Yeah, you'll end up shaking the gun while it's upside down, try to get that stupid hammer spring, yeah. hammer spur into the right place if you don't have a, a clever little tool and you don't have any idea what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, I thought I, I, I always take my guns apart when I buy them, uh, and I did that with my Mark III uh, a number of years ago, and I, I couldn't get it back together. Yeah. It, it, I had to put it away for two hours. Yeah. Was, and <laughs> you I was going to say – you walk away when, when yeah. the first time you do this because you're going to get so frustrated that nothing's going to work. You just got to set it down yeah. and walk away. Yeah. But understanding, and at least now you have some conceptual understanding of what the problem is, is, a lot, is, is orienting the hammer and the hammer spur. A lot of videos don't do a good uh, explanation. They're just like, turn the gun this way. Now pull the trigger. Now put, turn it this way and pull the trigger. And it's like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, and that's exactly why. Um, you can find great deals on these guns used for that reason, as people just despise tearing them down and uh, working on them. Um, I, you know, talk to any gunsmith, and they'll tell you the story of somebody that brings one of these in in a bag that can't get it back together, <laughs> and they pay the gunsmith to do it. Uh, and if you've done it a bunch of times, you can see how, you know, it doesn't take much at all uh, once you once you learn the tricks. Um, but you can find these things, you know, people have migrated to the Mark IVs because the Mark IV is so much easier uh, to, to take apart. So th that means there's a lot of these on the market for less than 200 bucks and they're great guns they are a great value for that money. And there's, you know, they make target versions of it. They make a 10 inch version of it. Yeah, um, they, are, they are laser guns. They will shoot exactly where you put it real popular amongst the bullseye folk. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're fantastic guns, and uh, they're great for kids, too, because there's no recoil. They're just super soft um, plinkers, and um, they, they tend, this one tends to really like uh, CCI mini mags, 
but it's really not uh, too ammo picky. A lot of 22s are real picky about what ammo they'll take, but this one uh, pretty much eats anything, but it seems to shoot best most accurately for me with the CCI mini mags. So keep an eye out for an old Mark series pistol. The magazines are readily available. They are not interchangeable between the 2245 and the traditional grip, and they are not interchangeable between the Mark II and Mark III and Mark I series. So that's one little source of frustration, but they are available. Uh, I have, I think, uh, 10 magazines for this, and so I usually load them all up the night before and, uh, you know, shoot to my heart's content. Hey, Once does, again, that, the, does the Mark II have a, pull that out, does it have a thumb saver on it to drop the spring? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I have a little tool that just holds this down and then I just drop 10 rounds in there, but you just drop the rounds in. And then you can tune these magazines a little bit. Uh, when you get them, they, uh, you just take a, a little piece of sandpaper and just deburr the inside of these channels a little bit, knock any uh, machine marks and stuff off of them and uh, you know, clean up the face of the follower and they'll run pretty good. You can just, you can tune them. And then to take these apart, um, you know, you just push down on this little stopper and let's yeah, Okay, somebody in the chat is showing off. They said they followed the directions in the owner's manual to get their gun back together. Oh, nice. Somebody that can, somebody that actually read. So, <laughs> uh, when you put these, these back together, make sure you put this little thumb saver on the right side. If you put it on this side, it will jam up in that gun and it's a real pain to get it out of there. And you might end up ruining the mag, but that's pretty much it for one of these things. That just drops right back in there. And this, uh, you're gonna wanna wear eye protection putting these in because they are like little BBs, little little eye missiles. So, and you can see that spring is a little bit un, um, wobbly, but. Anyway, that's that's kind of the Mark Mark pistols in a nutshell. Uh, I wanted to do it because Lonnie and I always joked about how miserable these things were. But um, you know, once you learn, you you can do it. It's uh, just takes practice and uh, cussing like a sailor. So, any questions? Yeah, do it, do it, do it as fast. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again, blindfolded. <laughs> yeah, do it again. Blindfolded. I, w I wonder if I could do it blindfolded. I don't probably think not. I, the, the, no, it would be fine it. until you had to get the 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 little uh, the hammer spur. The hammer spur aligned. Yeah, this it would be fine until I jammed that into the palm of my hand. Yeah, to that, was, that, that too. That too. Uh, that's a lovely patina you have on that mainspring, by the way. That's. Uh, yeah. Uh, how old is that gun? That's got. That's got to be. Uh, it's about 30 years old, I believe. Uh, 70s, 60s? Uh, I, uh, I think no, it's actually, it I think 80s? it's the 80s. Yeah. Uh, because they started making these, I believe, in the early 80s. And they made these up until about, I think, 2004 or seven. I'm not a, I, I don't know for certain. And then oh, they came well, out with the Mark realize, III. I didn't realize they went that long. I yeah. Thought they, I thought they went to the Mark III a lot earlier. Uh, I have a question, you know, taper yeah. barrel versus bull barrel versus. Uh, well. I can shoot both of these pretty much with the same accuracy. This has got the big <laughs> thick bull barrel on it. I don't notice any damn difference between the two. Uh, some people swear that the longer bull barrels are, are more accurate. Um, but I, I honestly, honestly, I can, I can shoot the center out of a target w with both of them. Um, so I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the, the uh, bull barrels are big and uh, heavy. You got weight going for you if if that's your preference. I know the si the sights are better. Uh, the yeah. Do you know uh, there's a question? Do you know if you can change out the Mark II barrel for a tap rail uh, barrel and still use the bolt? Uh, I don't know. I know a uh, lot Mark of people. Yeah, a lot can of people change out the Mark II barrel for a tap uh, rail barrel and still use the bolt. I don't know because uh, I know a lot of people have tapped the receivers on these, uh, you know, drilled and tapped the receivers to put a uh, rail section on them or a red dot mount or, you know, but I've seen these with um, Picatinny rails on them because you, you yeah, know, they, they also make an aftermarket uh, that, that fit into the rear sight channel. 
Yeah. And put a and put a rail from basically where the rear sight is to just prior to where the taper uh, starts on the on that. Uh, I guess we're calling it the receiver. Uh, yeah. yeah. So right, uh, just a little south of your finger there, a little closer to the breech, right, right about there. Yeah. So my Mark III, I had one that if you you tapped out the the rear sight and you tapped in this uh, adapter and you put a rail on top of it. I don't know anything about aftermarket parts other than things like that. And that was for Mark III. Yeah, I know Tandem Cross and Volkortsen make uh, complete uppers for these um, and that are, you know, super accurized. And, uh, but this, this tapered barrel is the, the, the uh, least expensive, the least, um, you know, it's, it's the cheapest version that they had and that they still sell. And you'll notice that the sights, you know, the, on this one don't have adjustable sights. I mean, you can drift this rear sight because it's dovetailed, but there's nothing you can do to the front sight. Yeah. Um, so these are the, the cheaper of the different models of the Mark series pistols. The target model has a bull barrel and it has adjustable sights. Uh, they did make them in nickel or not nickel plated, I think either stainless, stainless steel yeah yeah and they're those are really slick and nice guns um this is just my knockabout out in the woods uh plinking gun um it's not worth a whole lot but it runs great and it's super accurate on the mark IV, you'll notice that this has the the later adjustable sights um you know you have an up and down adjustment screw here and uh you can you can move these up and down and and uh, uh side to side uh, and these are more what would be on the Mark II series or Mark III series target uh, barrels. This is a target barrel here. Typical for, target shooting range that you're at, what, uh, 25 yards? Yeah, 15, I can I can shoot 15. laser beams with this thing at 25 yards. It uh, be how much beyond that. I mean, you're you're dealing with a 22, and it kind of runs out of steam. Um, but with a good steady hand, yeah, you can you know 25 yards is very very easy. I. I have a, a, a tactical barrel for this with a Picatinny rail on it. I put a red dot on it and it is really fun and fast to shoot speed steel with. You know, you can acquire a sight picture. There's no recoil. It's, it's a super fun gun to uh, shoot uh, stuff like that, you know, real fast shooting. They're, they're I, put, I, I put mine on paper at 50 yards, but it wasn't any fun. No, 25 yards, is, 25 yards is about the, the furthest out I, I, I would have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, anything further and you got to get fancy. Yeah. And then you're up into the rifle. Might as well just get a 1022. Okay. Uh, who's showing that fancy target pistol up there on their screen? Who is that? Well, I was just going to show it. Was it was like, hold on. Hold on. So Eric, Eric wants to show off. So hold on. Let me spotlight here. <laughs> We're still recording. So say nice things. No, the, the question about adding a red dot or some kind of a picky tinny rail to these. So this is a 2245, but same idea. It's a Mark III. Um, basically, you take out the rear dovetail, and this adapter works fantastic. Um, the only drawback to it, which you're going to run into with any of these series guns, is that the uh, red dot isn't quite as low to the bore axis as I would like, but they work really, really well. So if you don't want to go through drilling and tapping it, this is a good alternative. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, my Mark III, actually, it didn't come with a rail on it, but it came with a rail in the box. So I could actually, I guess they, huh. they supply a rail if you wanted to drill and tap it, but it came uh, with the, came with the sure pistol. Are you sure it didn't have a rail adapter? You might want to it, check It that doesn't out. have any of these little screws uh, already. Oh. And huh. Eric's, gun, Eric's gun's real fancy, so just yeah, for everybody's. I'd, you know, uh, I haven't actually looked at it to see whether or not it does have um, an adapter there for it. Yeah. Um, Eric, I just happened a, to notice when I, I when I pulled it out of the box, I said, "Oh, this is interesting. It has a rail, but I have really no need for the rail. I'm not looking yeah. to yeah. put something on it." Hey, hey, Eric. Well, we got your gun on screen. I got a question. Is that, that's a, you said that's 2245. Now. I had never owned one that takes regular 45, uh, regular 1911 grips or, or no? You have to yeah, modify them. One. Well, so this one does. Um, the original that it came with did not. It had the old plastic grips, uh, which were obnoxious and terrible. Um, this is actually a Volkortsen lower that I got after market um, that takes normal 2240 or takes normal 1911 grips with a couple of minor modifications for where the uh, bolt release is at. You have to do a little bit of trimming on it, but that's about it. 
Yeah, so Ruger, like their 1022, the Mark series is a little bit of a tinker toy. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put uh, Scott back on. The aftermarket support on these guns is is incredible. Uh, Volkortsen and Tandem Cross and a few other manufacturers make all kinds of upgraded parts for these. And uh, you could take a $200 pistol and turn it into $1,000 pretty quickly <laughs> if uh, you're not careful, if you have no self-control. Um but they're 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 so much fun. I love to introduce new shooters to the sport with them because they're they're um, super accurate. You could be successful pretty early on. You get the feel of a full framed pistol without all the recoil. So that's what that's one thing I love about them. Awesome. Well, I uh, we're nine minutes prior to the hour. I uh, opened up for additional questions. We don't have a, a huge number of actual live attendees. I can open it up. Uh, I can op I can open the room up if folks want to ask questions. There, if folks would like to unmute themselves one at a time, please. Otherwise, we'll have to mute it again. If you have any questions for Scott or Eric or anybody, going once. Nobody oh, likes me. Everybody hates me. No, that's not true. It's me. I think. Uh, uh, so I'm going to, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and close it down. I'm going to mute you all back again. So stand by. Uh, I got to unmute Scott because that was rude. My phone tonight, since yeah. this headset refuses to play with Discord. Yeah, no, that's a, uh, yeah. So we'll fix your audio. Uh, Paul's supposed to fix your audio issues. But anyway, so I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the recording so that we can get it up on YouTube so other people can enjoy the pain. Um, and, uh, you know, if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to kill the audio and video for the recording in three, uh, two, one, and no questions. We're killing the, we're killing the recording. All right.